Hello everybody, don't mind the fact that Eric's head is getting cut off right now by the top cam. <laughs> uh, I will be switching to the other one right away, but this is a deck retrospective on my deck, but also mostly Eric's deck. Uh, when I was looking at starting Dunnage with Eric, I thought, hey, wouldn't it be fun for Eric to do a deck building video? But then I thought... Eric's choices are going to kind of be like, this card looks neat, you know? Like, and that's kind of like where it's going to live. So I thought it'd be better to do a retrospective at the end where we can talk about the deck, we'll talk about what cards, like, might, like, what cards worked, what, what cards Eric enjoyed, what cards Eric didn't enjoy, cuts that they might have made, discoveries they made about the character and the deck and the cards, and then also I can give, like, further recommendations, because Eric also, you know... Um, Ask me, like, what would you do for mulliganing, which is a hard part of, like, figuring out this game. And uh, Eric's just organizing this, and we're going to be switching to top camera, and we're going to get it going. So, Eric, is everything organized? Uh, yes, I think I have everything uh, in order. So, I guess, uh, I know the answer to this question, but this is, like, the question that I'm going to start with. And I think it's a pretty simple question. Uh, did you enjoy Stella Clark? I really enjoyed Stella Clark. Mm -hmm. um, I feel that she is a great character to learn with, partially because her action economy is good. Mm -hmm. You get to spend a lot of time failing and succeeding skill tests, and being able to fail skill tests for a benefit means you also uh, are more willing to take problems on, mm -hmm. and then you have to play a little bit from behind sometimes and mm -hmm. understand what it, what it means to have some horror on you or what it means to have some sort of card effect play where it mills out your deck. Yes, yeah, definitely. Uh, so I really enjoyed that. But then also, she just gets a lot of benefits, and she gets a lot of strengths. Yeah, she is She is a very powerful investigator. People were worried that uh, after seeing, like, when they, you were playing Stella for the first one, that Stella was going to kind of paint your um, perspectives of characters. And while it's true, like, you can see in the videos where we were talking about cards, where Stella painted the evaluation of the cards, but you also see Mark, who is very much a straightforward, I'm not here to fail test, I'm here to just make my number big and pass tests, right? Mm -hmm. So I'm not too worried about, like, that, you know, I don't think that Stella is going to be a problem going forward. You'll just, you don't want to fail tests if there's no benefit to failing a test. So why don't you talk about cards? I'll let you just kind of like freewheel and deal here, and I might just like pop in occasionally. Well, I want to start off with the quick learners. So <laughs> Justin recommend this is one of the cards that Justin did recommend to me, and I now see why. Because with Stella, it is so good to get, um, especially two quick learners, which is one of the first things I spent my experience on. Mm -hmm. Uh, it is so good to be able to guarantee yourself a fail. Yes. And to be able to guarantee yourself a position where you can reliably fail your first check in order to get benefits later on and improve your your pathfinding. I suspect I will never play Quick Learner again. Mm -hmm. uh, just, again, talking about that, painting things with Stella. Seeing how fast the difficulty ramped and understanding how big a spread is for plus three, plus four, plus five, and kind of wanting to be in that plus four range, plus five range, Quick Learner can very easily um, effectively eliminate uh, your first action for you if you're not someone like Stella. So yeah. I can see other people running it and everything, but I don't think I will be again. Yeah, there are decks where, like, I mean, also especially because, like, like, realistically, you won't play Arkham like me where I play, like, I play, like, a, a campaign. I get a campaign done in, like, two or three weeks, right? Because, mm -hmm. uh, like, yeah, there's builds where Quick Learner exists outside of Stella, um, but it usually requires a bunch of other cards to get works, and it's ultimately very similar to what you were trying to do. So, yeah, yeah, I, I, I get that. But really strong, getting the two of them together gave me the ability in a lot of late games to comfortably not only lose the first skill test, but also just really push later skill tests and really time out my my activities. Yeah, and something I did, I was trying to I was trying to be very hands-off for Eric's deck building for this. Um, but the thing I did, as, as, as Eric said, I, I said you should buy Quick Learner first, and I also took an In the Thick of It in Stella's deck, uh, which actually isn't here, it's in, it's in my Daniela deck right now. But uh, it was just like, we banked the XP, and I was like, you're going to use that to buy Quick Learner. Mostly that's because Dunwich is a very low XP campaign. It's the lowest, so uh, it was harder to bank that Quick Learner was going to be there, so that's why I chose that. Which is actually really funny for me, because I will say, as a new player, I felt like I was drowning in XP at, 
at times since I didn't understand the cards and I didn't understand what were good choices. Mm -hmm. So it's going to be really fun now kind of knowing what to look for with that whole like you want to be up four, you want to be up five. Mm -hmm. Uh, it's going to be really fun to uh, buy cards with higher XP now, kind of knowing what I actually want to do with my decks. Yeah, like, it's it's it was a very different... Because, like, when Travis plays, his style is very much, like, you get, like, a pack of cards for people to upgrade from, which I think is good because it makes it more focused. But I never learned that way. I mean, my collection that I was upgrading with was a lot smaller. But I think it's a great way that I even saw things that i did when i was first upgrading it's fun to just you know try things out yeah. go for it and i think then now going forward it'll be one of those things in your next run where you're going to be more like how can i um best take advantage of my card pool like what do i want to do to do my deck that i'm going to be building here like i'm going to choose specific cards at the beginning that are going to be my goals that i'm going to upgrade into absolutely which is not something i really did mm -hmm. Um, the next card, and I want to bring it up immediately because I bought two of them, and you'll see why, is Burn After Reading. I bought it, used it, and bought it again. Yeah. Um, and I'm not sure I should have bought it the second time, but mm. I really loved it. Uh, for one, as a librarian, the whole idea of playing a card that's book burning is <laughs> really ridiculous, and it was thematic to what we ended up doing with the Necronomicon. Mm -hmm. So it's just the Exile 0 to 5 level card in your hand, and you discover two clues at your location. Um... I liked this card because I liked being able to just pick up two clues for no reason. Yep. And again, I was really amused by it. I also did find the one wild card symbol, while not particularly good, was helpful occasionally. Always relevant. Yeah, always, yeah, relevant. always relevant. Um, would I, should I have chosen it the second time? No. Uh, did I ever use it again for its ability? No. Yeah. But. So, yeah, I think it's a cool card. Uh, my only, like, I think going forward, you probably won't do it as early as you did again in the future. Yeah. Mostly because it, um, as it exiles, it eats future XP as well if you want to play it back. However, it's a great card. Like, if we were going into the final scenario, I'd be like, you should grab a burn after reading because you can just, like, get rid of it. It's very powerful for that effect. There is a cool exile archetype you can play it in where you get free experience to rebuy exiled cards. That which is, is really fun. Nice. Yeah. Um, speaking of the next card that I wasn't particularly, uh, that I bought and then immediately didn't use, even though I had it in my hand literally the whole fight. Uh, the whole final round was Devil's Luck. Uh, kind of funny that we mentioned it. I had mentioned that I wanted a Perseverance after Justin mm -hmm. had said in our second last um, part of the campaign, oh, if you had another Perseverance, this would be the perfect time to hold on to it. So I was like, ah, well, you know what? I don't get a second copy, yeah. And I don't know what the penultimate encounter is. I actually did get to the first point where I nearly died yeah. from horror, so it was good to have Devil's Luck in my hand. But for one XP, doing nothing with it, I probably wouldn't buy it again. Yeah, I mean, it probably would have been an extra second Perseverance at the get-go. However, it did allow you to have absolute security in that last turn where you could have died. It actually is, like, uh, that pretty much guaranteed you'd win the game, yeah. right? Which is, is that worth one XP if you don't use it? Potentially. Potentially. Right? But also, like, Perseverance also does that job as well. So. It was also fun to tell you, I can't die. Yes. Yeah. 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 So that was fun. Um, the next cards in the deck are not experience-based. They are last chance. Um, I love Last Chance. I love Last Chance because Last Chance is such a complex card to play, and I liked having two of them. I th I don't think I ever played it at its full power, but I did get to play it at, like, four and three, mm -hmm. which still felt really good. I like having it in the deck. Um, I see why you wouldn't necessarily take it all the time, mm -hmm. uh, especially if you've got a big hand, and there were some games where I was flooded for cards with my Stella plays. Yeah but I still loved always having it. Yeah. It's a bit strange because in your deck, it's kind of a non-bow with drawing thin, right? Mm -hmm. So it's basically like whichever one you drew first would determine the value of the other one. Yeah. Um, like I said, like like there's a review right here from a TLDR. You'll routinely, routinely play this for three or four and be happy with it. I think that's ultimately true. I think there's better cards that go with it because uh, other cards that can replace it, but I don't think it's a bad card. Uh, I think, yeah, the, the weird part about it in your deck was that it was like... Uh, not great when you had drawing thin and also uh, rabbit's foot, right? So yeah. it's a little bit awkward to like get the full value, but I don't think it was a bad card. The, I, the way I view Last Chance, which is actually ironic to the name, is the better I was doing, the worse this card got. Mm -hmm. And the worse I was doing, the better Last Chance was. Yeah, yeah. So it, it worked for me and it was a good safety net card. Mm -hmm. Yeah. 
Um, I had two upgraded flashlights. So this was pretty much towards the very end of the campaign. I think halfway through, I started upgrading the flashlights. So notably, there's no image of flashlight three. So I'm just playing flashlight two for people. So the version, the difference is, is that it's three experience. It's also a big card. Um, and it is a reaction, comes with four supplies instead of three. Uh, and you can use it when you are evading or investigating to reduce the shroud by two. Now, I had some really good luck in the last two... Um parts of the campaign that we did. Um, so I actually didn't need to use the flashlights I really mm -hmm. had paid out for. Uh, but nonetheless, seeing the difference between the base flashlight and this one, I see why this is three experience, and I absolutely love this card. Yeah. The fact that it can be comboed with other cards, like old key ring, is so strong. The mm -hmm. extra supplies, so strong. Mm -hmm. So I really like this card. I would absolutely run it again. Yeah, so the thing about this one is it's a good card, but this version... It exists best in a package where you care about testing at zero. So, like, if I'm not doing old keyring, there's better options, yeah. right? Um, this actually is a key piece in this, the Quick Learner decks that aren't Stella because Stella gets two actions with Quick Learner. Everyone else just gets one at the that's minus true. two. So that's where Flashlight becomes a bit more powerful there. That's fair, yeah. yeah. If I ever played a character, though, who was, yeah, looking to get that test zero again, I would absolutely buy Flashlight. Oh, yeah, definitely. Yeah, I yeah, was yeah. really impressed with it, even though I really never used it. Uh, the next card, Professor Warren Rice, oh, which he's was a story uh, card. We don't worry about. Yeah, that. but I did choose to take him just because I got the extra book. Yes, yeah, 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 yeah. And drawing more cards to make um, quick. Uh, sorry, last chance worse. To make yeah. last chance worse. Uh, track shoes. Um, I remember Justin talking at one point about track shoes being good, and so I was like, I'm just gonna casually take track shoes at some point, and I loved it even rarely using its after you move effect. I think I only did it like the one time successfully. The plus one uh, running on the foot, yeah, so good. Yeah, so probably in retrospect, what you should look at that is the reason why track shoes is so, what I mentioned, it was really good. It's a good card because free movement's good. Plus one foot is good when you have four. But with drawing thin, it's a free drawing thin activation. Yeah. So I probably would have run two track shoes instead of just one because you have two drawing thins, which means you're more likely to hit. Because like if you hit track shoes and two drawing thins, you get two free, uh, like two free cards and resources every turn. Like you don't That's even need to do point. a test for it. And then if you fail, which you're going to because you're testing five to seven, you get a free action. Right? That's pretty solid. Yeah. Yeah, that's actually a really good point. I never considered comboing those two. Mm -hmm. So that's a good thing to think about. Because, um, yeah, I just love track shoes for the potential yeah. victory, but for the plus one foot. And, yeah, yeah no, you make a good point. Mm -hmm. um, I ran two resourcefuls. <sighs> um, they got milled a lot. They got milled a lot. I didn't yeah. get to play with these very much. I think I used them once, mm -hmm. and it was okay. But I don't know what to say about these. These are one of the strongest cards in the game, Resourceful. I believe it. They just, you never had the situation where it came up. Um, and I think a big part of that was uh, they got milled. Yeah, they just they, they got, got, got milled. milled. They got milled by Yogg Sothoth -Hoth a bunch. And I think that's just the, the way the cookie crumbles. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I would love to play, I, if I was ever to play another Survivor or play someone with Survivor again, I would take Resourceful. Yeah. But I, maybe, depending on how many other uh, Survivor cards I had. Yeah. But I mean, like, Worst case with resourceful, you're looking at bringing back, um, like if you brought back a liquid I found, if you, uh, if it was a longer, if there was more experience, you probably would have seen them bringing back your old key rings more, but because yes. Dunwich is low, smaller on experience, you didn't see them as much. Yeah. Yeah. But I don't think I ever played this. No. Aside from the one time and I brought back something that wasn't terribly good because I had nothing in my discard. Yeah. Um, I did have the one persevere. Um, I actually really like this card. I'll be honest. The two brain was mostly what I played it for. I didn't actually yeah. play it for the cancel up to four damage. That's a um that's the the thing we say that's best about perseverance is that it's a guts. It commits for two brain icons. Yeah. So like even if you're not dying, it still has a use. Exactly. Which when you compare to Devil's Luck, which only has a foot, that's a part of the reason why. Like it's half value, but it costs an experience. Yeah. Perseverance. I don't run it because I play like I'm never gonna die. Yeah. But Bryn plays a lot and it's it's just it's a good card. Yeah, I yeah. like it. I probably would have gone for two of them. Yep, yeah, I think that's fair. Instead of Devil's Luck. Maybe yeah. next time. Drawing thins. I love these cards. Um I I had two of them, I think, from the very beginning, just because they seemed good for me. Mm -hmm. Um and I love them. I used them every time that they were on the board that I had them. Uh, I use them very reliably. Um, I think them with Quick Learner is a great combo. Yes, definitely. Yeah. Yep. 
I'm excited to not have them. Yeah, because they also, we were playing without the taboo list. So the taboo list are like modifications to cards. This thing actually now costs three experience. So they were free for you, but yeah, it's a good card. That makes sense. It's a sense. good card, yeah. That makes sense. Yeah. And as I said, I'm glad to not have them. Yes. Uh, because they are such a strong card. Granny Orn, the tough old bird. So I had the three experience Granny Orn. I think I jumped straight to her. I didn't buy the base then, one. Yeah, the level zero was not in your deck. You had Madame LeBranche in your deck. That's right. Yeah. Um, so I got her because I wanted not just these icons, if I ever played her out of my hand, but also just for the bonus, and then uh, to be able to fix winning and losing. It didn't really come up for me. No, we actually never needed it, which is good because that means then we failed either by as much as we want to, we failed by so much it didn't matter, or we passed all our tests, yeah. right? Uh, but she was, she, I, I think she's also... three version, that's the one you have. Grab the wrong one. There we go. But I do think that wherever, uh, I, I liked the fact that I could help other investigators at the location yep. passively. Very that was effect. a big, yeah, that was a big thing for me. I really liked her. I think she's definitely worth the three experience in this Stella deck. Yeah, and also, like, if we had, if it was a longer campaign, you probably would have wanted two of them. Oh, right? wow, yeah. Because you all, like, I mean, like, cards that are, like, especially that boost your stats, you always want two of. Like, you notice when I will get to my deck, I have, like, apart from a few that I cut as the game went, it's, like, mostly two ofs. Because, like, especially Gurish, even though he costs four, I want him in play on turn one, right? Why not three? Because you can't. You can't have three of a card? Unless it's Myriad. I think I have a cheat, then. I think you did it earlier. I have three. Oh no, Night that's your signature. Those. That's your signature. Oh, thank yeah, goodness. That's your signature. Okay, I was like, oh. No, there I was failed. a ball, there was a round after where you did not cut an old key ring when you upgraded a new one, but right. it didn't actually matter for the scenario. But yeah, like you'll definitely want two ofs for like allies are very good. You want two, of, especially when they're as powerful as Granny Orn, mm -hmm. and like especially if you're going to be a Mystic who's going to be fighting. That's what Eric said. They they are interested in trying. You're going to want two of everything that deals damage in your deck that's because you like I have two of all my weapons, right? Because you know I want to do my thing unless they are limit one per deck, right? All right, what's next? Uh, Madame LeBranche. Mm -hmm. Um, <laughs> I like Madame LeBranche because she's she's pretty tanky. She's pretty cheap to play. She throws a book into play, and then she has two passive abilities that just uh, support you when you're down. Mm -hmm. So I liked her, especially for two resources. I felt she was good. Um, she came up a few times in my deck, and I got value out of her, and yep. I liked her. I liked having her more for the health than for the abilities, Yeah, but she felt good. In your deck, it probably would have been better if she was a granny level zero. Yeah. And you did both. Just because, uh, like, the Madame LeBranche is a great card. She's cheap soak, right? Her ability is good. Um, but I think in your deck, especially the level zero granny, would have meant you were more reliable in hitting your look what I found, so your dumb lucks earlier on. Yeah. Yeah. Speaking of, pretty much one of the biggest cards in my deck was dumb luck. Um, so good. So good. I got out of so many tight spaces with this card, and uh, it did help that I was drawing consistently in a way that allowed me to activate them. I think a, a better built Stella deck would have more reliably, as you said, with Granny Orn and with some mm -hmm. other things, been able to effectively trigger dumb luck more often. Um, but I also just, I love that it's either, uh, like, I love that it's fast, I love that it's play for two, or I love that it's just run for two. Yeah. Just do it. Yeah. Yeah. So, funnily enough, I actually don't like Dumb Luck as a card. Oh, really? However, uh, I think that it's, there's a re I think there's, like, it, this sold me on it that there's, like, a home for in two player. A three player or four player, I think it goes way down in value. Mm. Because, like, there's more ways to solve que solve problems than just, like, evading them in a panic. Because, but it, it was a good card in our campaign. I think that also was beneficial because of Stella. Because when she fails, she gets an extra action. Where failing an evade action kind of really sucks. But it did sell me on it more than I thought about it before, especially in two players. But I think that is mostly because of Stella. But I could see other investigators also liking it. That I could say names, but they don't mean anything to you. <laughs> I also I also think it's a very uh, specific card too, because one thing I noticed with Dumb Luck was I mostly used it on creatures that would summon to a different location yes, than me. Yes, that was very nice. And yeah. so that was the real value of Dumb Luck. And that's pretty niche, because if mm -hmm. you're just going to draw the creature and put it in front of you again... Yeah. You haven't won yourself a huge amount of breathing room. Yes. But with this one, especially uh, in that last game, I was able to just be like, go go home. And I did like that thing we did in that one turn where you put it on top, and then I used a kick in the hornet's nest to grab a different thing and shuffle it in. That was a fun little thing. Yeah. Like, I, I'm not still like, 
I, I did think it was very impressive in that campaign, but I'm still, uh, I'm, I'm more impressed than I was, but I'm still not a big fan of dumb luck. But mostly that's because I also don't like evading because it doesn't solve problems. It's kicking the can down the road. But I think in Stella, I think dumb luck is a great option. Yeah. Um, look what I found. Uh, just a good card. Just a good card for me. Just a good card for Stella. Again, much like dumb luck, I needed to have better fixing to guarantee it. Uh, there were some times I just played it for the two book because I was so far ahead in a circumstance mm -hmm. and I just needed that clue that I wasn't worried. Uh, I think a better built deck would have been able to reliably use it and maybe it, I needed to upgrade it too. Yeah, the um, upgrade is more... I mean, in Dunwich, I don't think so. Because, yeah. especially in two players, I don't think so. Um, but, no, I think... I think no, I think, yeah. I, I think yeah. That's, yeah. It saved us a couple of times. Like, it got us what we needed. It would have been good if you were able to resourceful them back. You would have seen, like, if I play this card four times, I'm going to win the scenario. Right. right. Especially in Stella. Yeah. But but I liked it. It's good. Yeah. I just didn't necessarily have enough to fix it. Yes. Yeah. Um, a card that I feel a bit weird about is Grit Your Teeth. I don't know if I would run Grit My Teeth again. Mm -hmm. I like it. But it feels like so much resource and so much card play. Mm -hmm. And I mean, sure, if you get it perfect off, if you play it and then you're getting like three more actions with plus one skill each, that's great. But with the number of times where I was in a situation where it was like, either I'm already with Quick Learner and I'm already with other mm -hmm. effects, I'm banking on getting bigger benefits later anyways. Mm -hmm. um, and a plus one per skill check, I feel like, isn't as good as a plus two in a single skill check. Mm -hmm. So I don't know if I would run this again. I, I Like, it was okay, but often I would have it in my hand and I would just play it for the one wild card. Yeah. Because I wasn't in a position I felt ever where this felt like a good play and a good use of my resources. Mm -hmm. Yeah, no, Agree Your Teeth is uh, widely considered to be a bad card mm -hmm. and it's for the reason that you said it just doesn't feel worth a card most of the time yeah right like um there's not really a home for it even in stella you're just already too powerful that it doesn't matter like sure it's nice there were times when it triggers and like you were able to like have more comfort when it came to evading enemies especially in that final scenario but what what matters is that another card probably would just make you do more better, right? Yeah, but I think exactly. that's I think that's a good assessment because every card will have their chance to shine in this game. Mm -hmm. There's very few cards apart from like two or three that I can think of off the top of my head where there's like a moment where they're like, oh, this actually did something. But we have to want more from our cards than just doing something. You yeah. know, we want them to like actively help us win the game. But I think that's a fair assessment that you have for Great Your Teeth. Yeah. Yeah, I, I wasn't I wasn't a huge fan of it. Mm -hmm. Sharp Vision I was. I had the I had the one XP version of it, and I absolutely love it. Um It's the it's the flip side of the Stella where you purposely set yourself up to win more and then you commit yep. one of these and then you still get the additional clue. Seems really fun with Quick Learner. I've actually never played it with Stella and Quick Learner. It seems like it's just like a nice way to just ensure that you're gonna succeed by two because it gives you the two to pass by. Yeah. Yeah, I think that's really cool. Yeah, it was really fun. It was a really fun combo. Okay. I loved this. Um, and yeah, having it having it up to and then have a potential benefit, I'm good. Yeah. I'm good. It's free. I'll take it. Yeah. yeah. Like, it's an experience, but it's like, it's not a cost to play this. Yeah, no, it's a great... I love Sharp Vision. Um, <clears throat> take heart. I drew a lot of cards. Mm -hmm. I had a lot of resources. I, I think take heart goes up in value when you don't have... When you're playing Taboo List, and in your deck anyway, we're drawing thin... Um, doesn't come in your deck at turn zero. Yeah. However, take heart still like I well, it's personally against my play style because I like um, I like passing all my tests. Mm -hmm. I very rarely want to fail, but take heart is still widely played because it's just like such a good resource punch that comes out of the card, especially when you know you're gonna fail. Mm -hmm. I think in Stella, it's maybe it's like obviously still good, especially when you combo it with Grizzly Totem, which we haven't talked about yet. No. Um, because Grizzly Totem allows you to return it to your hand after the test ends, which is very nice. I think the problem with, with Take Heart was that your drawing thins kind of neutralize the resources. And also probably when you're just when you're just starting out and you're new, 
uh, you don't really know your deck and like what you want to get out of your deck that well. And I think the value goes up when you're more aware of what you want to be looking for with it. And I think that's the thing about Take Heart. Um, because anything that like you are, especially in Stella, when you're looking at failing and then turning those into even more goodies is very nice. But you also were goodie rich without them. Yeah. However, there were times when you used them on me and let me draw cards and gain resources, which was a nice little boost of it as well. That was true. That is true. So yeah, I think Take Heart is good. I just don't, I just don't think I had a place for it when I played it. I think that's fair. I think that's very fair. Uh, speaking of the upgraded version of Grit Your Teeth, here's Live and Learn. Um, this is what I want. This mm -hmm. is what I wanted from True Grit. I only had the level zero version. I never felt the need to upgrade it. There I is no upgrade for Live and Learn. Ah, that makes sense. Yeah. I feel it's really good. Yeah. Uh, it's great in a Stella deck, but I think it's great in any deck because it just says attempt the test again. Yeah. Get plus two skill. Yeah, this is the one that we talked about, like Lucky versus Live and Learn, where Live and Learn has a specific home while Lucky is just generically good. Mm -hmm. But Live and Learn is a great card in the deck where you're looking to fail and like benefit from failing. Yeah. Yeah. I liked it. Um, upgraded old key rings. I don't know what to say other than this is an amazing card. Yeah. I loved it. It's very strong. Yeah, notably there is no level three version of it on Arkham DB, so here's the level zero version to, you know, make your morning, everyone watching at home. <laughs> the new one is now that's three keys, and if you if it's tested zero, you discover an additional clue. Yeah. Yeah, it's very powerful. I think it's too powerful. You weren't even doing broken things with it, and it was, and you were very impressed by it. Yeah, and it's if you succeed, remove one from yes. old key ring. So there's not even. It's such there's a no safe risk. card. Yeah, there's no risk. This is the safest card I've ever seen printed. I can't believe that this exists. Yeah. This this should be the magic key that whatever that group of key people is mm -hmm. protecting. They yeah. should be stopping you from buying these. Yeah. It, it was is, really good. It's very good. Yeah. And then adding it to flashlight, where it's just yes. like. And like, but the thing is, like, you also don't need in your deck. You didn't need to do as much work because you're quick learners. You can just get there. You were also being entirely fair with it. You never resourceful it. You never scavenged it. And like, that's where it gets gross. Yeah. Yeah. I didn't need to. Yeah. I I barely burned through them. I mean, I think that's also because of Stella. Mm -hmm. When you don't have an additional action each turn that you can just throw into an investigate, it does mean that you're gonna have to like find more ways to get consistent burst clues. Yeah. No, it's such a good card. Mm -hmm. Uh, neither rain nor snow. Um, Stella card. I love this card. I play it badly, I'm told, <laughs> and I still love it. Um, I like that it has three question marks so I can throw it at a friend uh, when we're in the same location. I love it because it can just be win. It's just win. And then if you fail, it's just win. Yeah. It's so good. Yeah, so there is a combo. Yeah. With a card called True Survivor. So I'm just going to get that on the screen. Oh, that's disgusting. However, what you do is you grab two neither raid nor snows uh -huh. and a resourceful. And then with the resourceful, you grab true survivor. And then you play them and you just loop it and loop it and loop it. And it's considered to be like the strongest way to play Stella. Maybe not now that like the tested zero archetypes are really good. But like it's a very it's just you'll never die. You'll never lose the game. Nothing can kill I you. I hate that. Yeah. It's a very powerful loop that exists. And I think once again, you played your neither rain nor snows quite actually fair. You weren't like and it was fun to watch because a lot of people when they, they see Stella, they think neither rain nor snow, and they're like with like when you have a lot of experience, you know exactly when you want to play them, you can like weigh you can like weigh all of the risks and be like this is not the neither rain nor snow this is sn slam down the neither rain nor snow right yeah. uh, but it was fun to watch you just kind of like play them fairly <laughs> so, yeah i like them that. yeah they're just a good card yeah uh grizzly totem i am not skilled enough to play this card <laughs> i do not understand this card i bought it so you actually bought the try try again, thinking that it worked the way that Grizzly Totem actually works. So I let you do a hot swap for yes. it. Yeah. And then I proceeded to basically never use it. Mm -hmm. um, I think a part of that is as a one of. Yeah. So like, if you look at your deck and you had like, instead of grabbing the Grizzly Totem or the try try again, you grabbed a, a Granny Orn instead. Yeah. It would have your deck probably would have been just more consistent. Mm -hmm. Not that I think it was a like it was your deck. I think your deck did great and you played very well with it. Um, but if you look at like um, why upgrading is important, because now you have one Granny Orn and one Grizzly Totem when you could have had like two Granny Orns or alternatively two Grizzly Totems if that's what you felt like you wanted to do. And like I can a hundred percent see how Grizzly Totem would be super strong, especially in Stella. I absolutely mm -hmm. can. 
but I was never in a position where that extra icon would have made me feel like I was going to win or lose particularly big. Mm -hmm. And especially for the two assets, every yeah. time I had it in my hand, I was like, I, this is the only time I'm short on assets. Yeah, on resources? Yeah, on resources. Yeah, so Grizzly Totem works really well with Take Heart. Like, that's that where, sense. that's like where, it's like, because like, what was kind of happening is that you had like packages of different like focuses of Stella. But I think that's very fair when you're doing your first ever upgrades. Yeah. Right? I, this felt... I don't know if anybody here plays uh, League of Legends. Mm -hmm. as, as, a, as, a, as, a, as a D minus ranked player at League of Legends, the lowest rank possible, um, this felt like I went to a guide on the internet that was like, this is the best way to play your champion. <laughs> and I bought all the items and proceeded to not know how they worked because yeah. I had no experience with it. So Grizzly Totem probably really good. I, you know, I've been actually I've been wanting to play League of Legends. We should play League of Legends. We should. Yeah, we should because I also 100%. probably suck. <laughs> oh, terrible. Okay, Rabbit's Foot. Um, I love this card. Should I, have been a two of in your deck, probably. Should have been a two of in my deck. I 100% agree. Yeah. I can't believe I didn't think of it, especially when I was considering getting the Devil's Luck and whatever like the other yeah. cards. No, I, I don't think I would have spent one experience on it. I think the Devil's Luck, even though it didn't actually do anything, wasn't a bad choice going into the final That's scenario. True. But just just a good card. Yeah. Just a good card for Stella. So, uh, to as kind of like the final part of the retrospective, what do you think were the strengths of your deck? What did you feel like you felt the most confident in? I think the strength of my deck was my ability to consistently make even my neutral action mm -hmm. very effective for mm -hmm. clue gain. Mm -hmm. And also just to absolutely hoover clues up. Yeah. There were times where I was sucking up an amount of clues that I was like, this can't be intended for a two-player mm -hmm. game. Like, I am just generating so much gain off of this. I think another benefit to the deck was that it... Uh, I, I've, I had a Shopner's catalog, which was really, really fun the one time we both got to burn through it really fast. Yeah. But I did eventually end up removing it because I just couldn't find a play for it because with Stella and with the way my deck was built my consistent resource gain and card draw actually was putting me at risk. Mm -hmm. I was getting so far ahead and getting to fix my hand and mm -hmm. choose what I wanted. Uh, so I think that was another strength of the deck was just the fact that even with it being in those weird packages, yeah. it was so consistently able to perform what I wanted that sometimes I couldn't get yep. the I couldn't get the uh, card combos that I wanted into play. <laughs> a big thing for that is especially because quick learners are permanent. So if you're looking at like what like if this is such a big part of a Stella deck, and it's just like what you want to be aiming for because it's like always there. So it means that you can always take advantage of your last two actions with Stella. Uh, what would you say the weaknesses of your deck? I'd say the weaknesses of my deck was that some of the cards were inconsistent. Mm -hmm. uh, I ended up with way too many allies uh, for someone with only a one ally slot. That was a big mistake on my part. Um, I think that... Notably, we won't count story allies in that, because story allies are generally good enough that you can take them. Even so, I think I had three allies. Yeah. I think what I think was the thing is that you... Uh, you... You had different allies, mm -hmm. right? Because you had Madame LeBranche, Granny, and then Professor Warren Rice. Yeah. And realistically, you want to hit Granny or Warren because they boost your do something stat. Yeah. So yeah, I think that's a fair fair point for that. Uh, I do think I do think I didn't decide what I wanted Stella to do consistently. Mm -hmm. I was just buying whatever felt like was strong with Stella. But that's the best part yeah. of upgrading when you don't know anything about the game. Salad. Right? Yeah. I just took a salad approach. I had no healing. Yeah. And I, I'm aware that this is a two-player game and your character is designed to do the protection side of mm -hmm. things and the everything, but I had no healing, and I definitely felt that. Honestly, I wouldn't have taken any... I think you didn't need any healing. I, I think I think that Stella soaks for 8 and 8. Yeah. Your allies were your healing. That's right? fair. Because, like, they're there to take damage for you. Um, but that's also, like, I know under some people, like, want healing, but healing also generally... We actually, so the next side-by-side side we're going to do is specifically about healing, because healing is very Ooh. tricky in Arkham Horror. It's very interesting and very tricky, um, but I actually don't think your deck needed healing. Okay, that's good to know. I can understand the fear of dying, but you actually were only close to dying on one test, and you had the Devil's Luck to protect you. That's true. right. I think your Perseverances were enough healing in your deck, if, they, if there was two of them. That's fair. Yeah. 
And then, yeah, the only other weakness in my deck was just that I wasn't doubling down, and I wasn't doing the magic card thing where you build a deck and you construct it to always run the same mm -hmm. way. Yeah. My deck wasn't consistent in how it ran. Yeah. Yours was like a limited deck versus a standard deck, like a constructed deck. Exactly. I think that's a good way of looking at it. All right, let's go through my deck quickly. Uh, I'm going to kind of just rock it through mine, because mine's pretty basic. Um, so with Mark, you actually do need healing, because if you take too much damage, you're going to fall, like, piss off Sophie. So that's why I had the Hallowed Mirrors, which gave the Soothing Melody. So this is limit one. If I could run two, I would. Um, but that's, like, the, uh, the healing there. However, as you know, we also had Gurish, who is kind of... He's kind of like healing, because he can soak for you for a long time and help. Uh, and we also got a medical student, which just gives you burst healing and then soaks for one and one and dies. So that's kind of how we looked at the healing for Mark. I also had a, two true grits that were brought down to one, mm -hmm. which can also just soak damage is what I was looking at there. We were the fighter, so fight we did. And we fought with a gaggle of guns. There's a lot of different approaches you can go with guns. And I actually um, didn't run any way to fetch my weapons. Which is not optimal. There were times when I didn't get my guns, and I was kind of just like having to get there. Of course we always got there, but I did take some risks because I know Dunwich. I know the enemies to expect, and I know what Mark Hera can, can do, and I knew I would find a gun eventually. So we had the Tom Thompson, which gave me money back, the Colt, which works with Mark but needs a little bit more boost, and then a 45 automatic as our dud gun, the gun that we would play if we didn't find anything else. So this was instead of being copies that helped me find guns, I instead just ran a dud gun to help me like find something. And that did end up being how we had to do that. Would you only ever run like four weapons generally? Depends on the person, what the weapons are, what I'm looking at doing, if I'm building around my weapons. Uh, I wanted to specifically play these weapons, so that's why I did this. I generally would run four and then two way ways to fetch weapons. That's oh, kind of okay. like how I generally do my thing. Good to know but for it, my fighter deck next. But it depends on the character and like the class and like what the even the campaign, mm -hmm. right? But generally, like you want like six to eight cards in your deck to be ways to get weapons. I only have five here. I'm not a good example of that. But it worked. It worked. But it, it could have been, like, more consistent. However, we tried to make up for that consistency in other ways. Through one in the chamber, which allows me to reload guns. So they're kind of like additional copies. We also had a one of um, extra ammunition that I bought going into the last scenario, which was unfortunately milled. But it's basically another copy of a gun. Of course, if you see them in the wrong direction, it's not. But that's why you mulligan properly. <laughs> that's why you just make sure your guns are in your opening hand. Uh, economy is very important. So we were running these for our economy, which was the Stand Together, which gives... I love Stand Together. It helps both people benefit from it. And then Emergency Cash, which is just a staple economy card. Uh, custom modifications was I wanted what I wanted to build my deck around. This would have been better not in Dunwich. I also forgot that you could redraw the token with it. Uh. I don't think it mattered too much. Because uh, once again, I'm not going to like look at the big picture and be like, we could have won two turns earlier because we won, right? We uh, but I got the extended stock and then the extended magazine for my last two upgrades for it. These, of course, were going... The intention was it to put on the 32 Colt because it doesn't give you a stat bonus. So I thought I wanted that here because it would make it so that I could attack at seven with it, which is like what you're attacking at. Like, that's a good number to attack at. It's very good. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that is the laugh of, I, as I'm sure you've seen if you've watched through several moments where Justin was just drawing for gun. Yeah. Um, we had bandoliers. These allow us to hold additional weapon assets, so this will allow us to hold our Thompson and our Colt. I only think it happened once, so it just never. We never draw them in the right order, but I'm not bothered by it. I'm okay. Those could have. These could have been prepared for the worst, which lets you search the top nine for a weapon, or a backpack, which lets you search the top twelve for an item or a supply. Whoa. Yeah. Uh, but they weren't. So, but I'm not upset. And uh, we had some one ofs. This was a kick in the hornet's nest. There was two of them. I'm less hot on this card. I still think it's good in Mark, but uh, that's why I cut one of them. And then we have an evidence when you defeat enemies, you can grab clues. Eric didn't need the help, so I'd never put a second one in. 
But on the first scenarios, they were good because your te clue tempo was lower. You were also learning the game, mm -hmm. so we didn't have as much clue burst. Uh, and if you want to see, I mean, even like your was good, but man, seekers can burst like fucking crazy. They're so quick at getting clues, it's nuts. Uh, our last few things here, we had Act of Desperation. I did this a few times. You throw your gun at someone, you get money back if you're successful, it deals extra damage. Uh, kill spells are kind of like weapons. They're not consistent, but you, they'll run out much quicker. But uh, if you're going to be lower on weapons, you want to make sure you have other ways to kill, and Act of Desperation is to do that. But you might be saying, but Justin, don't you need a weapon to use Act of Desperation? Yes. Do not as I do, do as I say. Right? <laughs> I mean, like, it worked. My deck worked. There was only, like, one... Like, even when we had to dig for weapons, we found them, we killed. But this is from, like, my ability to push my luck. It's mm. not, like, the norm of what you should be doing, especially when you're just starting out. Yeah, there was one game where I think you milled over half your deck looking for a gun. Yeah. Yeah, but... But, I mean, like, that's, like, my responsibility is to then find a gun. So, like, I went digging and I went looking and we found it. And we killed things. But I mean, like, this is also the benefit of Mark Harrigan because he can also just punch his way through things, especially small enemies. Like, I would, uh... In the last scenarios, I would, like, I was definitely hard mulliganing for them, but I, you know... The deck, did, it got it. Like, I wouldn't run more than, like... Like I said, it could have been a prepared for the worst or a backpack, but... I'm happy with how the deck functioned. I did kill very well. Then we have some skills. Vicious Blow, just more damage. Overpower, just more fist. Also replaces itself. Just bangers of cards. And that's the Mark deck. I had a blast with it. It was very fun. And yeah. Yeah, I loved my deck. I had a lot of fun. I'm very excited to play... I think you said Carcosa is next. Yeah, Path of Carcosa. I'm going to try to be a spell puncher. Yeah, a mystic fighter. I'm excited to... I'm going to play a... I'll probably play a Seeker. Yeah, you I want to see that I want to see that clue burst. Maybe I'll, maybe I'll play Harvey Walters and just draw a shit ton of cards and just like have my hand be huge. That could be fun. Maybe I'll do that. Maybe I'll do that. Maybe we'll play... Because we're playing No Taboo List still. Maybe I'll play Dr. Milan. <laughs> and play Higher Education. Oh, 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 oh. Maybe I'll play Rex Murphy. Oh, let's go and play Untabooed Rex Murphy. The strongest investigator in the game. Oh my god. Wouldn't that be fun, Eric? You just... I just walk over the scenarios and you just watch me do everything. Wouldn't that be really fun? You don't get to play? You're like, I brought these cool spells and I'm like, too bad! I killed everyone! Drew all these cards! Got all these clues! Yeah, that'd be fun. <laughs> uh, thanks for watching, everybody. Uh, have a good one. Um, I don't know if the Carcosa thing is going to be starting next week. It might. I don't know. We're going to see what happens, but it's going to be you, coming if, eventually. If you, if you do play Untabooed Rex Murphy, can I play the, the butler? Oh, play Carson? No, you gotta play, you gotta play, you need to still kill enemies. No, but think about it. Yeah. I just make you better. <laughs> yeah, we can, but the thing is, as soon as an enemy shows up, we crumble. Because Rex actually can't consistently kill enemies. That was oh. kind of just a oh, joke. Oh, okay, yeah. okay. You have to, I have to, I have like cards that I need to play to then discard. But I can help you get them. You could, yes, you could. <laughs> Thanks for watching, everybody. Have a good one, and as always, a GG's.